Hi everyone, we're going to talk in this sec session about master's programmes um, in the School of Geography. So I'm Gemma Harvey, I'm Director of Education for our taught postgraduate programmes in the School of Geography. Um, what I'm going to do today for, for the next 45 minutes or so is give you an overview of master's study in the school. Um, so for those of you unfamiliar with the School of Geography and Queen Mary, um, I'll give you some background on um, who we are, what we're about, um, and then I will go on to give you some more detail on the programmes themselves. So I will tell you about the types of modules that you can take, the general focus of the programmes, um, the types of electives that you can take, additional opportunities for improving your employability through internships and partnering with organisations. Um, and then we'll also look at some examples of what students have gone to do, gone on to do after they've completed their studies with us in terms of career options. OK, so thank you for joining us. Um, first of all, I just wanted to say um, a few things about what, why kind of why Queen Mary and, and why geography at Queen Mary. So um, you may be aware that we're one of the, the top UK universities, ranking highly in both um, Times Higher Education um, and World University rankings. Um, so you've got some recent statistics there. In the School of Geography, um, we're also ranked very highly on our research excellence. So 80% um, of our research in the school is ranked as world leading or internationally excellent, according to the most recent research excellence framework exercise. So this is very important. Um, and especially when thinking about choosing um, an institution and a school for your master's study, um, the research active nature of, of the School of Geography is, is one of our kind of key characteristics. So some examples here for you on screen um, from across our human and physical geography colleagues and environmental science. So you can see here we have colleagues contributing to key textbooks in the field, writing research monographs on their research, publishing articles in scientific journals um, and humanities research journals. So a real diverse array of, of kind of research di dissemination that you can see from across the school there. This is really important because it, it means that our teaching team, all of our teaching team are research active members of staff. So they're, they're actively involved in undertaking research at the cutting edge of their disciplines. And we feed that directly into our teaching. So our students um, benefit from that up-to-date knowledge and they also become involved in it, for example, through their dissertation research. So excellent research feeds directly into our excellent teaching across our programs. Um, but as you can see in this diagram um, on the left of the of the slide, it's a two way process. So our teaching also feeds back into our research. An obvious way that that happens is through the dissertations um, where students may be involved in, in wider research projects within the school and feed in their own ideas um, and sometimes even publish findings jointly with them. Um, with academic members of staff. So that's a really valued contribution, particularly at master's level, that there are more opportunities for you to, to become involved in that research within the school. So we have great facilities, Queen Mary Geography, um, for environmental science um, students, and physical geographers. Um, we have world leading, um, uh, well, we have um, very kind of um, extensive laboratory facilities, um, you're ha you all have access to world leading libraries um, across all of our programmes, both within Queen Mary and also across the University of London, including Senate House Library. Um, and we have state of the art field equipment in, in addition to our laboratories. Um, as a master's student at Queen Mary, we're also really proud that we can provide you with dedicated study space. So there are actually a range of, of opportunities for postgraduate students across Queen Mary, including um, 
the new uh, graduate centre building, which has dedicated study space for postgraduates. But within geography specifically, we have our own master study room, um, which is an excellent resource to be able to provide to help you with your studies while you're on campus. Um, and I just wanted to kind of flag that our programmes acro across all of our master's programmes, there are opportunities for you to actively engage with local, national and international organisations working for change in the areas of environment or development, depending on your programme. So some examples here on screen, but these are just a couple from, from many examples that we have. Um, so the Environment Agency, we've worked with them, particularly through master's dissertation projects to inform best practice in the area of environmental restoration, particularly looking at um, river systems and how habitat can be improved. Um, and then on the development side, we have um, an internship scheme with the London International Development Centre. So there's a quote here from one of our recent LIDC interns um, from last year, um, who's talking about being able to get involved with latest developments in, in, in the sphere, um, getting training and improving employability, um, and also having just a fun and engaging experience that can help you um, build your profile for your career after your master's uh, and get valuable experience alongside your studies. So I'll say a little bit more about the LIDC internship a bit later on. And I think an important um, thing to consider when you're looking into master's study is the environment that you'll be working in. And we are proud to be renowned as one of the most diverse friendliest and supportive schools of geography in the country. Um, we have students and staff from across the world. We have a large um, residential campus, the largest in London. Um, and we're really proud of our location in the heart of London's East End. It's a very creative um, place to be, to be kind of studying and, and living. Um, and one of the kind of reasons that lots of our staff and students choose to actually make East London their home, um, including beyond the end of their studies. <clears throat> so I'll just move on to say a few um, specific things now about our programmes. Firstly, to introduce our programme conveners. So at master's level, you have a, a dedicated convener or program leader for your program um, and they're your first point of contact uh, first point of call for um, for any kind of general academic queries related to your program and you'll feel free to get in touch with um, these colleagues um, now as you're considering applying because they're the best people to kind of talk to you about the specifics of your program so for Global Development, MA and Development and International Business, MSC, our convener is Dr. Sydney Corkin. Um, for Development and Global Health, MA, our convener is Dr. Stephen Taylor. Uh, for our Geography, MRES, it's Professor John May. So those are our programmes that are more on the hu human geography side of, of the discipline. And then on the sort of physical geography, environmental science side of the discipline, um, Water and Environmental Management, MSC, the convener is myself. And then Environmental Science by Research is Kate Spencer. So I'll just go through those programmes um, in turn now, just to give you an overview of what they're about, a flavour of the content um, and an overview of the, of the compulsory and elective modules and the structure of the programmes. So we have three programmes in global development, the Global Development MA, the Development and International Business MSc and the Development and Global Health MA. So as a suite of programmes, these are about challenging the, the kind of common use of Western historical experiences and categories as universal templates against which the rest of the world is measured. So these programmes explore the diversity of populations, economies, urban centres and govern governance practices in the global south but on their own terms. 
and this includes studying connections and disconnections between countries of the global north and the global south. Um, in particular, it's about thinking ahead as well. So thinking about alternative future possibilities for international development, both from a theoretical perspective and in practice. So just to look at, in a bit more detail at the programme structure and how those three programmes are different. Uh, for global development, we have 120 credits um, of compulsory modules. So these are giving you the theoretical background that you need to, to study global development at postgraduate level, um, and also some of the methodological skills that you'll need for your research project. Um, and that includes the dissertation itself, which is worth 60 credits. Then on the left, on the right hand side, sorry, you can see a suite of elective modules um, and 60 credits are chosen from these. So these include modules from the School of Geography and also from the School um, of uh, Politics and International Relations. So you can you can choose those according to your your kind of specific interests and needs and where you want to to focus your learning. So I've mentioned the LIDC internship scheme, which applies to this program, um, all three of the of the development programs, in fact, and I'll say a little bit more about that at the end um, of these this section. So our Development and International Business MSc is a, a joint program that's taught in partnership with the School of Business and Management at Queen Mary. Um, so again, we have 120 credits of compulsory modules out of 180. Um, and then you can choose a series of elective modules according to your interests. So here the modules are selected from either geography modules or business and management modules. So I'm not going to list out the modules here because you'll be able to revisit this presentation um, after the event. So, and all of this information is also available on the course finder pages for all of our programs, um, which you can access through the Queen Mary website. So you can, you can go back and, and kind of look in detail at individual module descriptions. So just to kind of look at the, the distinction between um, development and development and health, um, this program Development and Global Health Programme um, is about challenging the conventional ways of approaching health and development as separate issues. So considering alternative ways of promoting advances in human well-being um, by taking both of those um, issues together. It involves a collaboration with um, the School of Medicine and Dentistry. So you can take classes in global public health and health systems in that school. You can gain detailed understanding of key debates um, and new agendas that are emerging within development and global health policy and practice. Um, and obviously this year and the past couple of years now, um, we've been partly focusing um, on contextualizing corona coronavirus geographically as part of that program. So the, the structure and, and diet for this module, uh, for this program, sorry, um, again, it's 120 credits um, of compulsory modules covering the theory and, and kind of key skills that you need plus the dissertation. And then you can select four um, or up to four, depending on the credits, elective modules um, from this time within the School of Geography or the School of Medicine and Dentistry. So for all of those three development programmes, you can apply for internship opportunities with the London International Development Centre. Um, this is a, a fairly new scheme that we've become part of over the last few years. Um, and it's, it's kind of received really positive feedback from students, as you saw on the earlier quote. So the mission of the LIDC is to produce new knowledge solutions to the complex challenges impacting the world's most vulnerable citizens. So the kinds of themes covered include climate education, food, health, poverty and inequality and migration. So the LIDC offers master's students on any of our three development programmes internship opportunities in programme management, communications and business development. The internships are operate on a 
flexible basis, but with a minimum commitment of, of six weeks to ensure that you can, can really engage with a particular project. So there's more information at the LIDC site, and obviously you can speak to your programme conveners if you want to find out a bit more about that scheme as well and, and what students have done in the past. So the fourth programme on the human geography side of our discipline um, is the Geography MRES. So this is a research orientated master's programme um, where you get to specialise in a chosen area of research. So this is chosen with you, but in collaboration with an identified supervisor who will be knowledgeable in your field. So the idea is that you develop key social science research skills and methods um, and it's particularly well suited to candidates wishing to pursue a research career. So most of our students on the Geography MRES um, go on to do a PhD, either taking the MRES as part of a one plus three PhD programme, which includes a master's plus the three years of a PhD, um, or as a standalone degree and then applying separately afterwards for a, for a PhD. So both of those routes can be accommodated, um, but it is really aimed at students who are interested in further research and, and specifically PhD. So the modules here um, have a, a, a larger dissertation, so reflecting the fact that um, our, our students on this programme are kind of more research focused and, and kind of wanting to um, have that as a prominent part of their master's programme. Um, so again, you have key skills, research skills related to that as your compulsory modules and then select electives. Um, there's a selection here, but you can take modules from other schools if those are more appropriate to your research interests as well. Um, and that's according to your your areas of interest. Um, okay, so coming on to our physical geography and environmental science programs, um, I'll first introduce water and environmental management. Um, so this is the program for which I'm the convener. And here students combine developing knowledge across hydrology, geomorphology, biogeochemistry and ecology to um, gain an interdisciplinary understanding um, of environmental systems and their management, including key policy and legal frameworks underpinning that management. So we want to create um, graduates from this programme who can become part of developing interdisciplinary solutions to key water resource and catchment issues or perhaps wider environmental issues. Um, it has a focus on water, but we've had students go into kind of quite diverse environmental roles from this program as well. So we work in very close collaboration with external organisations in the water and environmental management sector. So particularly through our advisory board, um, who which comprises a range of different organisations, including um, big global consultancies like Atkins and McDonald, government agencies, so the Environment Agency we work with closely, and also environmental and other charitable organisations, so National Trust, um, Thames 21 and so on. So we have guest lectures um, from, from those colleagues in the environment sector, and we also work with them on dissertation projects, which I'll say a little bit more about later on. So in terms of the, the structure um, and diet for this program, we have 150 credits worth of um, compulsory modules. So these are designed to give you the key knowledge that you need um, to go into work in this sector, but also key skills, for example, in analysing and acquiring environmental data. We have a, a 60 credit dissertation, which is usually conducted in collaboration with an external partner organisation. So it's not a formal internship, but it is a, a close collaboration, which means that our students conduct research that is directly relevant and helpful to wider organisations in the environmental sector. So there's some examples here of, um, 
of those organisations that we've worked with before. Um, and we've had students publish research and have it used in, in kind of development of, of best practice in environmental restoration and management in the past. You can then select to sit from a series of elective modules, again, kind of according to your to your interests, but a key kind of selling point of the degree and particularly from an employability point of view is flood risk management and modeling, gaining experience in industry standard modeling software. And then our environmental science by research is our research oriented master's program on the on the environmental science and physical geography side of the discipline. So in the similar way to the geography MRES, it's designed to allow you to undertake in-depth research in a specialist topic area. So you would work closely with um, a colleague within the school, a supervisor who has expertise in your field of interest. Um, and again, it's focused really on people looking to pursue further research through a PhD. Uh, but we have again had students go di into direct employment in the wider environmental or geosciences sectors. Um, the programme gives you an opportunity to kind of tailor your training and professional development according to your field of interest. Um, so it's kind of quite flexible and you can kind of decide that with your supervisor. And you get to use the, the excellent um, research and analytical equipment, so the state-of-the-art labs and, and field kit that I spoke about at the beginning. So here we have 165 credits of compulsory modules, so we have a very large research project element, um, some key skills, and then an elective module selected from, from any that, that kind of best manage, match your interests. So on the right hand side here, there's just some examples of, of previous research projects to give you a sense of the scope of those dissertations and, and their kind of diversity across the discipline. So a range of topics can be supervised. Um, and the dissertation is, of course, a key element of all of our programmes. So I just wanted to say a few extra words about this. So this is your opportunity to to select a topic or issue that's really important to you and develop it in collaboration with your academic supervisor in the School of Geography. Um, and as I've said, for, for water and environmental management, but also on the development side as well, there are also often opportunities to collaborate with other researchers outside of the School of Geography um, and particularly for with pr practitioners um, and potential employer organisations. So partner organisations that we've worked with um, on dissertation research include government organisations, consultancies, charities, local councils, really diverse. There are also um, sometimes opportunities to conduct fieldwork overseas and we can direct you to um, expedition funding that you can apply for um, at Queen Mary and, and beyond. And um, Excitingly, um, our previous master's students have sometimes managed to publish their research in academic journals um, in, and also informed kind of policy developments and, and development of best practice, as I said. So this is an example here from uh, Water and Environmental Management publishing, co-publishing with the Environment Agency um, from a kind of a few years worth of master's research in the same, same river catchment. So that was really exciting. We're very proud to be able to support students in, in doing that. So just some example research projects on the screen for you here across um, different programmes. I won't go through all of these in detail, but obviously feel free to go back and, and have a, a more detailed look through them. Really kind of wide ranging across the different programmes. So development and health, looking at mental um, health service access in, in New Zealand, um, global development. We've had a lot of projects recently looking at um, COVID and rethinking COVID-19 from the um, perspective of the global south. Um, and in water and environmental management, we've looked at um, reintroduction of beavers, a natural flood management tool, um, effectiveness of, of wood in river restoration and so on.
So just wanted to finish really by saying a few things about career progression, because as a as a prospective master's student, it's really important that you think from this early stage about where you want the master's to take you. So master's study is all about um, kind of thinking about your career path um, and what and kind of why you want to take this program, where you want it to, to get you and support you in your in your chosen career. So it's worth thinking about that now and how this kind of matches your interests. So the good news is that there are kind of diverse opportunities open to you from all of our programmes um, and we keep in touch with our students. They come back and, and sometimes give talks and things on what they're doing. So you'll, you'll be able to, to interact with, with our alumni as well through our alumni network. Um, but just to give you some examples on the development side, our graduates from these um, programs have secured jobs with NGOs, um, with other development organisations, and also with government, government departments, as well as in the private sector. There's an example of employers there, Citizens Foundation, Fair Trade International, Christian Aid, Engage Hub and Swiss Reinsurance. Um, some of our graduates also choose to pursue further research through PhDs and academic roles in a range of, of departments and institutions. So on the environmental science side um, and, and physical geography, uh, again, our graduates have secured kind of diverse roles with different types of organisations, including government agency, so environment agency is a, a key example, also water companies, including Affinity Water, Thames Water, um, environmental charities such as Rivers Trusts and environmental consultancies um, such as Jacobs, JBA, um, Ricardo and Wood. So some, some really big consultancies as well as some smaller ones. Um, and again, some of our graduates have chosen to pursue further research um, following their masters through PhDs or other academic roles, including at Newcastle, Queen Mary, UCL and Reading. So I've just got a couple of profiles to, to finish with. So again, there's quite a lot of information here on screen and I'm not going to read it through to you, but feel free to, to kind of dip into these um, as is appropriate to your interests um, on, on, the, um, on the information that will be on the hub after the session today. Um, so this is from Bisme and she um, took the Global Development MA um, and went, to work, went on to work at the Citizens Foundation so being involved in providing ed education to underprivileged children across Pakistan. Um, and she talks a bit here about the masters allowing her to kind of explore um, a field that she'd always been interested um, and giving her the theoretical background that she needed, um, but then kind of allowing her to explore research according to her, her own personal interests. She found it a very flexible approach. Um, and then Brina, um, who took interna uh, development and international business, um, and I've kind of just highlighted in bold um, a kind of key phrase from her her statement here because I think this is it really epitomises what we're what we're trying to achieve with our masters. So it's great to to kind of see students reflecting that back to us. So she says, "I had so many. I just learned this at university, and I can apply it in this situation moments." Um, and this was her her role with Swiss reinsurance. Um, so she was finding um, that she could, she could apply lots of the skills and knowledge that she learned from her master's programme to her, to her job, which is exactly what we're trying to achieve. And a similar example here, but from the, the environmental management side of things. So Annika went to work with Affinity Water. So she started um, in a junior position as an asset, asset scientist, and she's now progressed to a senior position, which is great. Um, and she said the, the course gave her ideal preparation for the job that she's in now. It covered all of the aspects um, of river monitoring and management that she's expected to know for her job. So by working closely with with our colleagues in the wider 
water and environmental management sector, we can make sure that we're giving our graduates the key skills that they need to, to actually go um, and be able to start working on the ground in these jobs. So that brings me to the end of the, the kind of formal part of my talk. Thank you for, for listening. I hope that that was informative and helpful.